so what happened next, everybody, was like the greatest. So I got to give credit to Justin Roberts because he started it. Yeah, he's, he's Justin accurate. Roberts comes out. And he's always he looks fantastic. His hair, he's you know all dressed up and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's always so, you know, announcing the match is all serious and, like, this is a big-time serious job. He gets in the ring, he looks at him, and he goes, Shit's about to hit the fan! And it's everyone actually, goes, Ah! It, it, it's even better than that because he's very solemn when he starts. He has. Yes. And he says, ladies and gentlemen. And I thought he was going to announce like, a, a, an important global worldwide figure had been assassinated or something. And then he just says, Shit's about to hit the fan. And everyone goes, ay, 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 ay. That's what And for. then they fucking, first they hit Jericho's music. And people love singing Jericho's music. So now the fans that were like quiet, now they're starting to wake up. Oh, we get to sing Jericho's song. So they're singing the music. And, and, then, and they, I, then they hit Wild Thing, okay? And uh, I wasn't like a big fan of this version of Wild Thing for Moxley for a while. I've totally changed my mind. The Joan Chet version? Yeah, it just it was. The, the, the I don't X know what version. it was. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, they. Oh, okay. It's it's kind of like too pretty for Moxley. You know what I mean? The Trogs is like so ugly and horrific that like it's it's perfect for him. But anyway, they hit this music, and uh, and you know Moxley's crew come out and the brawl starts and it starts in the crowd. So this also, Justin Roberts. Jericho's theme and Moxie's theme. Now the crowds, they're awake, okay? And so they start getting excited this brawl's happening. They keep playing the music. Mm-hmm. And they play the entire song. And the song ends. And there's like the, the a momentary moment of silence. And then it fucking starts up again. And when that song started up a second time, this fucking crowd, they popped so big. Because now they're like, God damn, this music's going to play the whole fucking match. And we're all thinking about New Jack. And they're fucking beating the shit out of each other. And people are already bleeding. And this music's blasting. It's a fucking party. Like, it was the ultimate party match because it just had music. I guess. So they're fucking beating on each other. And the music's playing. And I didn't see this, obviously. Because I was just in the front row, I didn't get to see the TV version. But the storyline that rock star Chris Jericho doesn't like rock music. Mm-hmm. Therefore, he has to destroy the soundboard and the music turns off. Yes. And man, dude, I didn't know the match was going to go 22 minutes. And I actually thought, and I was going to be, I wrote on Twitter, like, I'll be furious if they turn this, this song off. And uh, about two-thirds of the way through the second playing, it just abruptly stops. Mm. And I was like, God, fucking damn it. And no one else in the crowd knew what happened either. So the crowd starts booing. Boo! There's no more music. Then they start chanting, we want music! And they're all angry, and I'm like, someone, I'm texting, I don't want to say who, I'm like, someone turn the music back on! Let, let me guess. Who but nobody be? nobody turned the music back on. But uh, the match went so long that in the end of the day, it didn't need the music, so it ended up being fine. And, and the, 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 the novelty of the music would have eventually it would have, right Going 22 minutes, you could yeah. have played the music the entire time. Yeah, yeah. But for like the first six, seven minutes or whatever, it was so fucking great. And at that point, like, at that point, the crowd is just, they're on fire for the rest of the night. And on top of that, this match was so fucking awesome and uh you know i guess like where dave was uh you know he could look down and see everything oh there's the guys on the ladder there's i'm at ringside so literally i only could see what's in the ring and all of the violence at the announce table and i was i was like two feet from where justin roberts sits so there's all of this violence and blood and shit all over and uh dude it was this was awesome to watch these guys in their element like i've said it before this moxley bloke this fucker's the real deal i'm watching him brawl out there at ringside and it's like this is a legitimate lunatic yes. like five feet from me fucking trying to kill folks here and uh i don't think they showed this on tv obviously because it was taken forever but uh you know this moxley's in great shape but man he got so blown up trying to undo that buckle. <laughs> he's fucking turning this buckle for like five minutes. And he's turning red. He's just pouring down sweat. And he's turning this fucking buckle. I'm like, somebody help him. Somebody go up there and help this poor fucker turn this fucking turnbuckle. I was dying. This match was great. The the first thing that popped me, Jericho's crew comes out dressed as the Backstreet Boys. They've got yes head to toe in white. Thank you. That's the key. As soon as I saw them in white, I was like, "Oh man, this is gonna be something." <laughs> they're they're all wearing white uh, wife beaters and and berets, capris and, and berets and suspenders oh, and loafers, and then fantastic. Daniel Danielson comes out wearing uh, it's a street fight, so he's dressed anyway. But of course, he picked a white shirt. Everyone's all dressed in white to emphasize all the blood. So the carnage just kicks off, and 
there's nothing to analyze here. There was complete insanity everywhere you looked. I was high, so I could see pretty much everything except for they went backstage, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, it was like no matter where you look, there was something going on. Yes. There's guys falling through a ladder here. Brian Danielson is slamming dudes in the chairs here. Guys just punching each other. And, and, and I didn't even realize until like today that at one point Moxley had a fork or a pen or something was stabbing somebody in the forehead. I had no idea about any of that. Um, so the key spot is, as much as one spot can be key in this match, uh, Eddie Kingston was taken out backstage, but he appeared coming out covered in blood, carrying a tank. Uh, 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 gas can. Thank you. A can of gasoline. And a look that says, I'm going to light this man on fire and murder him in front of the world. And he begins to douse Chris Jericho with gasoline, and he pulls out a lighter. But Danielson, who is now also covered in gas, slaps the lighter ever since. Don't kill me too, you idiot. So yeah, in the show, I said it's, this, this gas smelled like water. And someone was like, water doesn't smell like anything. And I said, you ever been in Vegas? Fuck. The water there is absolute horrible shit. You can smell it from a mile away. It is bad, actually. Yeah. God, help me. Um, we glossed over the Kingston promo that opened up this show. Well, it was fantastic. I, I was oh. in line. I think Good everyone every, everyone saw that one, but the one you guys didn't see is the Jericho Appreciation Society post match promo, which I, I tweeted did. out. I did fucking see it. Daddy Magic. Daddy Magic cutting. is awesome. This fucking yeah. guy's been waiting twenty years probably to be able to do a promo like this covered in blood, and fuck did that guy deliver? It's the greatest promo. That and Kevin Owens, uh, the the there was a, a Raw Talk promo with Kevin Owens on Monday that's out of this world. Those are the two you have to see, everyone, that you didn't see yet. So I was uh, eight rows up in the center section of, uh, of the, the center of the bleachers, and I could see everything except what was right below me. So off to the left, we got the... We got the ladder spot, and uh, right in front of me in the in the hard cam area, you got uh, Danielson fighting both of these guys, and over here you got Moxley. It was insanity. I would be remiss if I didn't mention was... Bridget loved them fighting and covering each other in mustard. Okay, that was her favorite part of, of all this insanity. Okay, that makes so, sense. So eventually, uh, the bad, the good guys are fighting amongst themselves. This allows the Jericho Appreciation Society to take over. Jericho puts Danielson in the walls of Jericho. Hager takes the dismantled ring ropes and chokes Danielson, just like Danielson once choked Justin Roberts. Mm-hmm. To uh, And, and uh, Danielson goes out, so Jericho and his crew win the Anarchy in the Arena match. And boy, howdy, did that live up to his title. Best match on the show. It was awesome. Rusty. Rusty Rose, 10 4 <laughs> Dusty. Is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. Okay, out of ring. Her, her Herman way, Blanchett. <laughs> Harlan. Way back then, they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl- uh, Rick Flair and some more guys. And so that was that. I'm just too. Who, who, who I'm did not, Rusty Rhodes wrestle? <laughs> If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.